Several years ago I made a video about an Arduino glider. Basically I got a, an old model glider, stuck an Arduino in it, and the Arduino was a kind of autopilot that guided the <laughs> glider down the hill. It's actually been one of my most popular videos and I've been planning a follow-up for a while. The thing is, here's the glider. And as I mentioned at the time in the video, it's still got this damage to the tail from when it landed. But that's not the only damage to it. It's had a number of repairs. You can see this tape along the side and it's been bashed around quite a bit, mostly because I'm a terrible remote controlled aircraft pilot, it turns out. Likewise with the wing, the wing has been dented and bashed and you can see I've attempted these repairs using tape and um, so I could try and repair this but I was thinking how do I repair the wing um, and how do I repa repair the fuselage maybe I make a new wing maybe I make a new fuselage and then you get to the point where you think well maybe maybe I should just make a new aeroplane So I've been thinking about building my own aircraft for a while, but the thing that really made me start thinking about it was this stuff. Now this is a foaming PLA filament that goes in a 3D printer. And it's designed for making 3D printed aircraft basically. What it does is it comes out as a foam on the printer and you can run it at a feed rate of between 30 and 50% of normal feed rate. And what that does is it means that you can make actually really quite light structures that you can 3D print. So I've, I've had this, it's been burning a hole in my cupboard for months. So I thought, let's have a go at making some kind of wing shape with this. Which led me to this. This is actually a wing, or at least it's shaped sort of like a wing. And it's incredibly light. I mean, it's really quite impressive, but it also allowed me to discover the other amazing property of this 3D printing material, which is that the, the layer adhesion, as in the strength between the layers on this material is very good. Normally with 3D printing, well, this was 3D printed vertically like this. Normally the strength is within the layer. So if I wanted to bend something in this direction, then it would be extremely strong because all of the strands of material that have been laid out are in that direction. And that means that if you normally, when you have something like this and you bend it, the layer adhesion, which is the strength along this direction, is very weak and you don't have a very good wing. But this foaming PLA appears to have extremely good layer adhesion, which makes me very happy. This is mostly empty space. It actually allows you to make a structure that has all of the strength in the skin and you can create a honeycomb in between. So what kind of shapes can I 3D print with this? Well, I had a go at what you might call a chuck glider, which is a model. The idea was you can throw this. Uh, I tried throwing it, it's completely unstable, so I've got some of my design properties wrong, but I confess I designed this thing by eye, not by any kind of calculation, which I'm going to do differently when it comes to the proper design. But the thing that's important about this is just proving that you can make all of the shapes necessary to build an aeroplane. And this foaming PLA is reasonably strong. I mean, I can bend the wings, they'll, they'll bow a bit. And they're actually mounted on these little spigots and not glued on. But I'm quite pleased with how strong that is. The next question, which is probably the one I should have started with, is what kind of aircraft am I building? And I already had an answer to this. What I want to build is a camera drone. So you see these all the time. People buy them, they're 
quadcopter drones that can fly around. They'll carry a HD camera and you can get some amazing aerial film. The thing about quadcopters is that they are dumb force. Basically, you've got a propeller and the propeller thrust needs to equal the weight of the vehicle itself. And that needs to be running all the time and that's how it stays in the air. The nice thing about a fixed wing aircraft is you have something called a lift to drag ratio. So the lift is going to be anything from 10 to 20, 30 times the drag because of this amazing thing we call a wing. So the aircraft is flying along and the lift generated is going to be many times the drag force that's pulling back on the aircraft. And of course, in level flight, lift equals weight and thrust equals drag. And that means you only need to be putting in a tiny fraction of the aircraft's weight as thrust. So in theory, a drone with a fixed wing should be able to stay airborne for much longer than a quadcopter. But we'll find out, I guess. This leads me through to what you would call the configuration of the aircraft. This is configured like a fairly conventional glider. Uh, it's got a long wing, a high aspect ratio. I'll talk a bit more about wings in a future video. The thing that I've been wondering about for a while has been, where do I put my propeller on this aircraft? The conventional place, of course, is on the nose, which I don't like. I was thinking about some kind of pusher propeller on the top here. And then recently I started playing this game called Carrier Command, which is really quite cool, actually. You command an aircraft carrier and a fleet of unmanned aircraft that fly off it, including a drone. And on this drone, called the Albatross, the propeller is on the back. And it just struck me that that would be a very cool and simple place to put the propeller. So I'm going to be basing my configuration off the Albatross, which in itself is based on the Predator and Reaper drones that are in military service nowadays. So I got to work with Fusion 360 and this is the configuration that I came up with. I have a lot of theoretical knowledge on how to design an aeroplane. In fact, this is my favourite textbook from when I was at university, Aircraft Design, A Conceptual Approach by Daniel Raymer. And this book is effectively the Bible of how you design an aeroplane from a clean sheet of paper. It gives all of the equations that you need and so on. That means I can base my design on mathematical calculations. I can actually make predictions about how well this thing's going to perform in flight. How accurate are they going to be? That's a good question. But the really interesting thing about this project is that I have practically zero practical knowledge when it comes to designing and building model aeroplanes. So I can't wait for the comments. But this is a learning experience and we will see how we do. Anyway, that's an introduction to this project. Stay tuned because the next video is going to be about the wing and how I've gone about designing it.